All right, um, welcome back, it's Siberian here, and I've had a number of requests on making uh, maps, so we're gonna do a, a brief kind of introductory tutorial on that. Now I wanted to show you guys a couple of ones I'm working on now. Um, this is obviously a European map. Uh, you can see all the different layers to make it get more detailed. I'm trying a different style here. Um, this one's actually quite large, so it's uh, very intricate. Um, I like the look of this a lot, but it's one. And this is another one I'm working on, testing out a more like satellite style, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, just giving a few different ones a try. But for today, we're just gonna do a basic one of kinda Western Europe uh, during 1700 so uh, this could be for a future documentary or who knows We've got options so um, yeah this is gonna be very unscripted kind of off the cuff hope you don't mind that uh, but that's just the way we're gonna roll today so without further ado let's get started so the first thing I do Right, new layer, and we can call it ocean, or water, or anything like that. Um, I just got this reference off of Wikipedia, so you can find one that you like and use that. We're going to start with a watery base, so you can feel free to uh, do all sorts of different types of water. You want a really dark one? That's kind of like this. Um, if you want more like the first map I showed, it's a little more representative of water. Yeah, whatever you're feeling, but just paste on that new layer the whole thing one color. Next, we're going to add another layer. Call this one land mass or land or anything like that. Now we're gonna talk about, have this one be the base ground color. Now, for this map, I'm gonna do like a parchment -y color. So, pretty light and kind of that orangish yellow tan. Um, you can do, like I was saying, satellite looking stuff, you can do whatever. And we're gonna paste that on this new layer. All right, so far we have two layers, and this is kind of the same process if you've seen the other um, tutorial on battle maps. I do pretty much the same thing at the start. Get your reference on there, and we're just going to erase uh, from the landmass file along the water border uh, to create oceans. You know what, for this one we may even trace the rivers because it's a small enough map. That might look nice. But for the start, I do this brush with 75% hardness. I just like the, the slightly faded look, but still defined edges. And yeah, you're just gonna go along, outline everything until it's done. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, time lapse it, I think. All right, um, yeah, I think that's all the edges of the water done. Something to keep in mind when you're doing a project like this. Oops, did I, I 
make a mark? Okay, no. Um, is that all maps are representative. So something I fall into the trap of a lot is making everything too uh, pretty, too perfect, um, and it takes forever. You don't need to do that. You can, as long as you're getting what you're trying to represent across, that's the mission accomplished. So don't be worried if there's like small artifacts here or little bits where the river curves slightly different than reality. Um, that's right. As long as we can recognize and, and orient where we are on a map, it serves a documentary. So uh, now I'm just deleting the rest of this or erasing the rest of this land with a brush that's at 100% hardness, which makes it easy to get it all. Um, and so the reason I like to do this style of um, setup for for rivers and water is because with this landmass like this, um, I make all other layers invisible and do layer new from visible. And then I can have some freedom with, I don't think we need this layer. I can have some freedom with uh, testing out on this one, a drop shadow. So we go filters, light and shadow, drop shadow. Now normally this just does a black shadow. Here, we'll make it visible at a certain angle. And this can be cool to add depth, right? So you could do like a little thing like that. But if you look at satellite imagery in particular, um, I kind of tried to mimic this here. See how it's darker in the middle and lighter around the edges? That gives you the illusion of depth in the water that the water is, because it's partially see-through, right? So the water's sinking off into uh, the distance. So what I like to do is take this new layer I copied. Do, uh, did I actually do the drop shadow? No. Well, let's check. Oh yeah, no, I didn't, okay. Delete layer. So with this layer selected, we go filters drop shadow I select this color and then I um, increase the lightness to something that looks and you can even go like slightly green or depending on the ocean something like that give it a nice color we can keep tweaking that and then set these to zero so that it's radiating evenly off not at an angle you could do an angle if you want but um, turn the opacity up and you can just mess with these settings, right? They're going to change how all this looks. So if you wanted it to look like a really gradual slope, you could do that. You can make it, um, a little, you could turn down the opacity, something like that. That gives a nice illusion of depth, I think. Um, and you can, of course, like change some of the angle stuff so it doesn't look too uniform. There. I think that looks nice. You can always mess with it. It might be a little too light. There we go. We'll go with that. All right. And if you ever don't like it, you have your backup layer, right? So there we have it. So this is the land masses done but that's a long ways off from everything we want to do because we want to show some of the politics of the day so the way i've settled on doing this for the most part is uh by creating a new layer calling it nations or something like that I'll turn down the transparency and for this layer, I do a little bit of a trick. I, I hide all but this original landmass layer. Right? Then I go select. By the way, this is GIMP if you're not familiar. I should have said that up front, but uh, we're using GIMP. Select threshold to zero, maybe. And bump it up to four. And I click on the land. 
This lets me select everywhere where we've made some marks and we can adjust it afterwards. Make it a little more rigid. Let's go down to zero and see what it does. Okay. Yeah, let's go with like two. I think that was a good. And we don't want feathered edges. Let's take off it. That. All right. Now you might be thinking, okay, why are you selecting that? But this lets us paint everywhere but the water. So we can reshow these layers and then click on the nations tab again. I'm just gonna have my reference layer on uh, opacity that's pretty low. And for this, uh, you can just paint on the borders. Now we'll get to color scheming and all that, but generally you follow like if you've played a paradox game, that's a good reference uh, for good color schemes. Although these this maps has like colors according to uniform color, because I know Frank's had that light blue. Anyways, we're just gonna paint some on here. I'm using the hard brush because we'll do some messing around with borders later. So we're just gonna time lapse a little bit of this. Alright, that looks like France done. We're not going to worry too much about the borders yet, so we're just going to go ahead and pick a new color for the next nation. Spanish Netherlands. Uh, we'll make the Dutch Republic a little more orangey. And make Spanish Netherlands a little more yellow, because that's what I associate with Spain. Thing I found is it's good to be not too, not too bright on borders. Um, the other thing is you'll just want to make sure that when you go through, um, you don't have gap or too big a gaps at least uh, between borders. So if there's a little overlap and stuff, it's fine. This will also depend on your preferred use for this. If you're going to be using these maps to show like land changes, so like, oh, France occupies the Netherlands and you wanna see the blue move up here, I, I would be a little more careful about the borders. Um, if you're just wanting a static map background to like animate things over the top of, then you don't have to worry about how good the borders are. I'll show both uh, both methods here in a little bit. So now I'm going to be kind of careful and just take my time. And yeah, so I'll time lapse it while I do this. You may have noticed I was focusing on the non-French border. That's because having drawn the French border already, you have to have a little bit more care with um, filling it in so that we don't make too big of changes. So let's focus on that and then I can zoom in and do a more detailed French border part. All right, so there's the Netherlands, or the Spanish Netherlands. So we're just gonna keep going with the rest of the nations. I'll probably just do part of the map for now and just show you guys the steps for this region, but I'll fill in a few more.
All right. For now, we'll do this just so we can keep moving along, but you would just repeat that process with all the other nations, uh, filling them in as you go. Now, we come to a kind of decision point um, on borders. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new file or layer. Call it borders, have it on top. Now, if you want to have, how do, how do we say this? If you want to have, like I was saying, a map where you're not gonna be changing where the borders are exactly, you're just gonna have like armies or whatever marching around on it. Um, this part's fairly simple. We can make it look as pretty or as simple as you want. If you want to have the borders changing, just know you're going to have to redo the border every time you change it. So, simple is probably better. And generally what I'll do for a border is get a small, maybe maybe this is good, this might be even be, yeah, that's too big, I think. We'll go with this softness and try two pixels. Yeah, that's good. And I literally just trace the border. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because when you're zoomed out, your mind just puts things in the right spots. And if you want it to look even better, you can go up a up a step. So maybe actually maybe we'll do that. We'll stick with oh, layer new layer borders. We're gonna stick with a th size three. I'm gonna do it on black all the way and we're just gonna trace everywhere where two different colors meet you can also do it along the water that tends to look nice as well but that's a, a preference thing and after we finish this I'll undo the selection so you can see how this is all starting to look Now we're going to time lapse it. This is the only bummer I'm running into is if I do this water border, I'm going to need to do it along the whole river. So maybe I won't do that. Just, just do national borders. Nice thing is about having this on a separate layer is that you can just delete. All right, there we go. Back to three pixels. I'm gonna follow this one because it is an actual border between nations. All right, there we go. There's some basic borders. So there's a few options we can do with this. You can make another kind of drop shadowy thing. Um, I'm just gonna make a duplicate of this layer. Uh, to get rid of a selection, just do Control Shift A. Uh, layer new from visible. Okay, so we have another copy of it. Um, with this new one, you can do filter, light and shadow, drop shadow. This one I might keep black and make it right on the border. But what I'm going to do is boost. Oh, that's too much. So you can play around with these settings, but I'm just going to give it kind of a fade into the border effect.
Right? I know that looks ridiculous now, but then we can bump the opacity down on both of these. I don't know. It's something. I think we'll keep the main borders up. So yeah, you can you can play around. Just know that if you want to make changes, it's gonna be a little harder in the future if you're uh, making your borders too complex. Anyway, so we'll stick with that for now. Um, so you just repeat that through the whole thing. And yeah, we have the start of a good map, you can tell already. Next step would just be to add uh, I'm going to keep that layer on. Um, next step would be to add names. So we'll, we'll call it, oops, i to have the right thing selected. The Dutch Republic. All right. I think a good look for these big, like, national names is white with a black outline. So we're going to, well, we'll leave it that size for now. We use the transform tool to change the angle, even the size. And just make sure there's no major towns we're interfering with, so. There we go. We do transform. Now we can do filter, light and shadow. Oops, not long shadow. Rock shadow. Time back to zero. And this time we're gonna make the blur pretty much non-existent. Something like that. There we go. I think that's a nice look for words. And something I'll often do is uh, bump down the opacity on the nations we're not focusing on and leave the it at full opacity on the ones we are. But for now we're gonna just take that, copy and paste, paste as a new layer, and move it to here. Edit. Uh, what was this? Spanish Netherlands. Oops. Now that is long and this area is more fat, so we are going to do the same kind of formatting that they have. Select it all, center, justify. All right. Oops. Now we're going to. Looks about the same. Fits there nicely. Check for towns. There's Brussels right in the middle of it. So, we can do that. Probably would be good actually just to get the actual letters down to a proper size. So let's try 20. Two, that looks about right. I spell Netherlands right? Yeah, okay. Get that up pretty much in there, and then we can just do filter, repeat, drop shadow. Right, and that gets it in there. So, we're just gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna copy this one. Oops. I'm gonna edit it. Is this one? Uh, 
Once again, control Z is your friend when you do stupid things like that. I want you to let me, there we go. Yes. Now to get that accent, you might have to look up the town or whatever and copy and paste if your computer doesn't let you do accents like that, but I'm not gonna worry about it right now. Repeat, and then we're gonna transform. There we go. And finally, we have France. Oh, I didn't actually hit OK on the transform. There we go. Yes. Put this down. Rename to France. Because it is so big, you can also do this. Makes it look a little more spread out, or just make it up to 32. France is a big place, it deserves a little extra scale, you know. Oh wait. Drop shadow it. Uh, something I would recommend is tilting things all the same direction. You see I started going like this, but then I caught myself. Just makes it easier to read. Alright. So, we have basic map so you could just do this to fill it in uh, if you want cities labeled as well just make sure you have a good accurate um, map and you can you can just fill in I have some like special once again I do a layer cities put it right above nations even borders, probably actually above the borders, so but below the names, and then you can just put on these little city markers. Of course, I didn't do any like resizing, so they look a little huge. But uh, for now, I'm not going to worry about that. That's pretty self-explanatory and straightforward. So. Um, Yeah, I think the next step is to organize things. So you have all your names, but it gets to be a lot. So I like to create a layer group and just do it like this. And just drag all of the national names in here. Then you can hide it and you can hide them all at once. And you could do the same thing with the city names. Anyways, with that said, um, we're going to show one more thing, which is how to like animate, let's say, a French invasion. Well, we'll go with a Spanish invasion of the Dutch Republic. So what I would do is start here and hide the names. Well, we'll keep the names. I would file, export as, right, and save one so we're gonna export it onto the desktop just as uh, stage wow one okay stage one PNG doesn't really matter too much all right then we're gonna take our nations tab and we're gonna create an invasion. So take the soft, and oh, we'll take the hard brush. We're gonna select Spanish Netherlands, and let's say they do a strike up, oh. There we go. Yeah, we got the same color. Um, 
Say they did a strike up here towards the river, but get stopped at the river. Oh, that's a good thing. So I forgot to have the selection active. So right now I can draw over the water. We don't want that. So to fix it, we go back to this. Only land mass, right? And I select the color. Boop. All right. Now we're good. So you can do a new layer and call it changes. So you can always go back or, and there we go. So we're going to do a little invasion up, not quite across the river here. In fact, let's say they just captured all of the territory south of this river here. I'm gonna fill it in. And since this is a new layer, when you make little mistakes, like uh, right there, I went over. Oops, you cannot do that. You can select the eraser and just erase it. All right, so we got this invasion sim signified, but the borders are incorrect now. That's why I said sometimes the borders are easier to make, less complicated. So we're gonna need to do a new change to the border. What you can do is select this borders one and just delete the old one. Right, okay. make sure you got everything looking nice and clean. And then uh, you can just draw a new one. So you just want to remember, okay, it was, it was on this brush. Is a size three, so everything's consistent. It's all the way black. We're gonna do new border along the river, right under there. Boom. Just call that good. Now, I know my conventions with where the borders are drawn as far as rivers are a little mixed up, but whatever. All right. So now, of course, this border is different, so you'd have to do a whole new, new from visible. Let's do it real quick. Make sure what I'm talking about. Layer, new from visible. Once again, it would be wise to go through and rename all these layers. You know what they are, but I'm too lazy. Then we're gonna do filters, drop shadow, and hopefully you you could even make a preset to uh, um, repeat the same shadows before. What I'm actually gonna do is just resave number one. Oh no, I changed the border. We're just gonna go with it. It'll look a little funky. No, I just, I'll do my best to match it. Sorry, I keep going back and forth. All right, filters, light and shadow, drop shadow. Oh, helps to have the layer visible. Drop shadow, this to zero. Yep. Mm. Oh, too much. Do it like that, and then like that. Right, 
because it's a little too heavy. I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter. There we go. We'll call that good. All right, there we go. And we'll have this saved as two. Export as stage two. All right, next step will be to pull up, uh, wow, DaVinci Resolve. So be back with that back up. All right, I just loaded up DaVinci Resolve, new timeline, and put stage one and stage two in there. So first things first, we're going to copy stage one in. And to make the border change from this one to stage two, uh, effect we're gonna go into fusion so go ahead and pull open fusion and um, we're also gonna pull in H2 all right just like that so I've used fusion a lot so sometimes I'm just familiar with things so if I go too fast I'm sorry try to answer questions in the comments but um, once again, scroll to go up and down, and then control scroll to zoom in and out. Uh, these windows are reshapeable. You can see which window is being displayed. So right now, media out is on the right window. If you do it on the left as well, now they're split. But we only need it on the right. You can also have, so there's part two, so you can see the difference. Um, for now, we're just going to do something quite simple. We're just going to take this, go like this, and it creates a merge node. There we go. But all of a sudden, hey, media out is this uh, stage two file, right? Where the Spanish have conquered this land. The, the issue is we want it to progress over time to show their advances, right? So what we're going to do is have media 2 selected and we're going to click the polygon tool it's right here alternatively you can do shift space and search for it shift space to to search so we'll go polygon boom click add okay it makes the polygon tool go right over the top of your media 2 if it doesn't automatically then just drag and drop it in with your polygon tool selected, you'll notice all of a sudden this one's gone invisible. Basically what the polygon tool does is it lets you click and create a shape, which then, because it's filtering on onto this media, whatever is inside the polygon will uh, show this media too. Otherwise it shows the original uh, media one and this is how I animate uh, territory changes so to start we can soften the edges so I'm gonna make right now it's very sharp looking right those edges we can soften just a bit it's like point yeah just like that not much at all We will curve it as we go. But for now, this is it. So to do this, you simply, uh, as you go, animate. So let's say you're listening and you want by frame 100 for the Spanish to have taken this low lens. You simply, you can see it's uh, animating it in. You simply, Drag these pu puppies up. And we're gonna just like make some things curve just to give it a little bit of fluidity. And there we go. Now, as you can see, it keeps that animation going. But now we're gonna have to see the the rest of the offensive, so we're going to say by frame 180, they'll have completed the attack. So we'll change the curvature on that. 
We'll bump this all the way up. Along with this, we can make this curved a little bit. Just to give those more natural advances look. We got the same thing here. And if you ever need to make a new point to grab, you just click and it creates a new one. It's quite easy. All right, there we go. So now if we watch the animation, they take the lower part and then they advance to the north. But right now we're just watching a polygon mostly. So we just hop back to the actual timeline. We'll see. We can zoom in. We don't need to watch the rest of that blank map. All right, we'll see. Oh yeah. Here's the Spanish advancing and taking over that land. So that's really it. Um, easiest way to go about border changes. So just have different stages and animate that polygon along you go, as you go. So I hope this helps. hope this gets you a start. I didn't do anything complete, but it gets your feet, st uh, I don't know, gets you started down the right track. So if you have more questions, feel free to leave a comment, ask, uh, I'll try to get to as much as I can. I'm not all, you know, life's busy, but um, yeah, with that said, hope you guys enjoy. I'll be making some more documentaries and more tutorial type things over time. So if you want to su subscribe to see those, go for it. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Till then, have a good one. Bye.